Hey guys, welcome back to Something About a Guitar. Um, I throw in a couple of episodes here and there about different types of instruments, coffee cans, um, washboards, or whatever. I owed Breezy Payton that, that episode, and uh, I'm not worried about hits. I'm just worried about getting uh, thanks out to the right people who keep our music going. So for those of you that watch the, um, the washboard, how to build an electric washboard, um, episode, you're probably going to be glad you did at some point in the future. That's all I'm going to say. Um, speaking of being glad you did or thinking about um, why didn't I do that, that's the theme of today's episode. You know, especially right now, things are crossing some of our minds like, why didn't I get my hair cut the day before the news broke loose that we were going to be socially, whatever it is, quarantine isolated I mean how many of us really like to be outside of our guitar shed anyway right uh, how many of you are thinking you know what I should have never sold that Floby at uh, at the yard sale you know I did an episode with Floby you know that right let me give you a link to it right up there by the way that's card five I use the other four later on in the episode which kind of tells you what's going on in the order of how I shoot these I'm probably going to wish I hadn't told you that but you know think about it you got any of those things where I wish I would have known like I wish I would have wrote down where I bought these three foot sections of different colors of shrink wrap and then ran out couldn't find them went back to buying the little stuff at the automotive store yeah I wish I would have wrote that down well guess what I found it I need to drive to Agua Dulce California they sell it at Agua Dulce hardware so Gas is pretty cheap right now, so you'll like that. Um, what if we would have, 25 or 30 years ago, bought an original copy of Robert Johnson, King of the Delta Blues Singers? I saw this around. I didn't even look at it back then, but there's another. What if I would have done that? Or you find out things that have to do with what we do. Let me set this down somewhere without dropping it. But you go ahead and do things. And when you're building your guitars and then two or three later, years later, you find out, oh, I was doing something that I probably could have done differently. And I wish I would have known that. How much time could I have saved? And one of those things for me has been the necks. You notice a lot of my episodes are about necks and headstocks. And, you know, some of us start off, I got a few guitars sitting here precariously, but some of us, uh, our headstocks never get past this. Uh, which is fine as long as there's enough room for your tuners. I got three tuners there. You cut a little bit out of it and let it drop down. That gives you an angle for your bridge and all that kind of thing. And yeah, first guitar ever signed by C6 Steve. Do you know who C6 Steve is? It amazes me that nobody in the United States really knows who he is. If you don't know, check it out. Oh, about music. I, I forgot there for a minute. This is the music for today's episode, Robert Johnson, King of the Delta Blues Singers. Now, I'm going to give you a link to this below. Um, see if you can find an original copy. You're going to have to get out some money, but they make some nice reprints of this or reissues, and it's a good one. You really want to have this in your collection. I'll give you a link below. While you're down there, give me a like, subscribe if you haven't, click the notification bell. Anyway, I got away from that type of neck and started going with or headstock and start going with this kind. This is the kind I'm known for. Every once in a while you'll see them rounding over here or even straight. But I went to this and where I found this was I got a template from my friend Darren Dukes when he had uh, Delta Groove guitars. I don't know if they make these anymore or whatever, but I've had this one forever and, and uh, it works out good for me. So. I usually trace these out. I cut my um, scarf joint on my headstock uh, wood and um, and then trace it out and I'm there's gonna be a link later on in the episode about headstocks 101 and scarf joints and how to do all that but I run across something a while ago where instead of drawing this out like this and getting this pattern here and tracing out and take it to a scroll saw which I started doing that first after I used a coping saw that was kind of rough um, especially when you start doing these curves and stuff but um, I ended up 
getting a scroll saw and the thicker and harder the wood got the more difficult that became then i bought a band saw and going around the corners is it's tedious but in any event i ended up having to do a lot of work on my belt sander and you'll see again in headstocks 101 how i shape them and how i kind of tend to use the radius of the end of the belt where it loops around to make these curves so they line up and I'll draw a number of lines across here and give myself reference points. Anyway, I saw a way that someone was talking about where you lay this on top of your wood like this and use your drill press and a modified drill bit to just basically route out the shape of the headstock using your template as a form and a guide and we're going to try that out today and see how it works so that said let's hit the bench all right guys again one more time robert johnson king of the delta blues if you can get this one on an original album uh instead of the reprint uh good um Recorded November 1936 and in June 1937. Great liner notes here. Good uh, poster on the inside. I think you all know that picture. Anyway, get this one in your collection. It's what's playing in the background today. Now, as usual, I'm going to tell you what's on my bench. I've got another Mississippi trailer house, sun house, whatever you want to call it, guitar going on. And uh, we aged the box. Uh, blue hey john sawyer shout out to you got the tailpiece on got our mississippi matchbooks on and hey shout out to gallia volt gallia volt if you don't know who she is you really should find out because if you don't i'm going to teach you then hidden under all this got some more mississippi license plates in putting up these getting a collection of these house plates hey school bus Hey, Bob Log the third school bus. Got a couple of school bus plates. And um, I'm going to be building a few of these. But I think the special of the group is, look at that, church bus. I'm going to, uh, I've got some, believe it or not, church matchbooks and a couple repent postcards and whatever. I think I'm going to put that one together and call it the sinner special. Anyway, that's what's on my bench. Let's move on. To see. Okay, I've got this guitar turned around it's got holly springs right in the middle hey you know mississippi loves you right anyway we've done quite a few episodes on headstocks how to cut them headstocks 101 i'm going to give you an icard link to headstocks 101 and then um, you can kind of pick up everything there is to know about headstocks and more how to find a pattern for one you like how to size it down for um the size we need to make cigar boxes or coffee cans or whatever it is we're doing but the whole thing here is i'm going to show you a trick because after you cut your scarf joint there remember the scarf joint jig episode i did i'm going to give you a card up there too there's two of my five cards gone got to keep track but anyway you've got to cut this out and shape this out and that's a lot easier if you have a template like this one i got this one from darren dukes um, typically you um, cut your headstock your scarf joint angle on it uh, i plane this remember the episode about planing uh, headstock so your tuners will fit we called that one turtle heading tuners there's card three you're going to want to see that one anyway once you get your headstock the way you want it and you put this like so then you take a pencil and you trace this out then comes the tedious part about taking it to a scroll saw which isn't really big enough it does okay down here cutting this part out when it's thinner it has a tendency to flop around you can take a band saw and then you've seen me uh cut these out take a band saw to them or a jigsaw and then use the radius on my belt sander to get these curves right i'm going to show you a little trick today that i heard about from darren dukes and here's card four this is nothing i thought of but there's an episode somebody did on how to use a drill bit to cut these out and that's what we're going to do today so i don't want to steal anybody's work again shout out to darren dukes and the episode that we all go back to 
uh, is done by a guy that builds guitars and you'll see that by clicking right up there. Now, I hope you'll continue to watch this one instead of that one because you don't get the quality humor and the bacon flavored toothpicks in those other videos. All right, can you all see here? We need a little bit of highlight. Yeah, I think we do. Yeah, you can all covet my Mississippi church bus license plate. You're going to love this one when I'm done with it. Anyway, so what do we need to do this? Well, first thing we need is some thin scrap, maybe these cheaper boxes, light piece of plywood, something like that. We're going to need that. And then we're going to need our headstock a piece that we're going to use to cut out and then we're going to make sure that this all fits on here like so I already traced this one out so we know it will um, we can do our little sample here again I ran this through a planer it turned out nice I like that color it's all marked off with the center lines and everything so um, when it comes time to glue it on the neck we're all right so what we're going to need next is some of this blue sided tape because what we're going to do is we're going to put some tape on here and tape on here and now we're going to put this at the bottom of this to protect it from our drill press what are we going to be doing with a drill press well i'll show you so first thing i'm going to do is put these together now you want to remember when you're using this tape you don't need to uh, put it all over everything you're just going to want enough to make it sticky so I'm going to put it right there in the middle and then I'm going to peel this off and put this on here. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to turn that over and put one here as well so I can stick this piece on the bottom. All right, it is literally three hours later and I finally got the sticky stuff off. And I'm just going to line this up like so and push down now. See how this works? I mean, this stuff isn't coming apart. If you do have to take it apart, I found you can use a flat bladed screwdriver and just stick it under there and pry it up. But anyway, this is the setup we need right here because we're gonna literally trim this out with a drill bit. How does that work? Well, let me show you. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is get a drill bit. Doesn't have to be this brand, but you're going to get a 5 30 seconds drill bit. You want to know why? Because it's four millimeter <laughs> metric hater. It's just too easy to get you, dude. 5 30 seconds is four millimeters. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to turn the bit over. We're going to use this side. Now, I told you it was four millimeters, so if I take my handy metric ruler I can see it's four millimeters see that there's five it's not 15 77 and a quarter it's four millimeters really easy now I'm going to double that I'm going to take my metric ruler I'm going to lay the shank of the bit the end of it against there and I'm going to put a piece of tape at eight millimeters so four millimeters wide I mark off eight now what I want to do is I want to take this to a file, to a, to a grinder, to a belt sander, whatever you want to do here. And I want to start, I'm going to cut a 45 in there. So I'm going to go to the edge and I'm going to cut this at an angle like so. Do not try this at home. This is very dangerous stuff. But when I come back, this will be done. Cutting diagonally from here to here. All right, look at that. Can you see it? See how it's cut at an angle? You see that? That's what you need right there. Now, we're going to take this and we're going to chuck this up in a drill press, like so. We're going to take this tape off. We're going to chuck this up in a drill press and make sure that this is where this usually is. You with me let's go to the drill press i swear it took me less time to move my whole camera and everything over here than it did to get that backing off of that two-sided tape anyway i know that you've never seen anybody do this before but you're going to put the drilly thing what do they call that the teeth i don't know but anyway i'm gonna put it here and uh i'm gonna chuck this thing in here have you youngsters 
ever seen one of these or you just used to those cordless things where but anyway you're going to torque this down good now put that off to the side so I don't forget it and you see I've got this here now if I start going up and down and adjusting the table here and I hit right there I do not want that to happen right there where that hits metal so I could say well you know what I'll move my table and line it up and screw it in and do whatever I do but I don't want that hitting there so that is why we have this piece of old scrap plywood down here because when we cut through here and get to here everything will be fine we don't have to worry about messing this high dollar bid up because it cost me about I don't know three dollars anyway so it was a good one so what I'm going to do now is I want this to be like so except about an eighth of an inch down now I'm not going to do this by doing this I'm going to raise my table up and I'll show you what that looks like because I'm going to have to reach across the camera to do that okay so look here I've got this set about an eighth of an inch I just reach over and adjust my table up again remember I'm not going to use this I'm not going to touch the up and down gadget you know this thing right here you know that we're going to not touch that at all but we're going to make the adjustments with the table and you can see that I've got about an eighth of an inch or so of this up against the wood. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my drill press and watch what happens. Okay, so that looked kind of sloppy, but when I take this and go like so, you're going to see that this is cutting a trench in and it uses my template as a form. So our little bit there has become basically the equivalent of a router. So I'm going to take that down. another eighth of an inch and I'm just going to keep doing passes now the thing to remember is you've got to have your RPMs if you touch this blade and it's getting really hot or it's moving too slow that's not a good thing but you're going to take it down about an eighth of an inch every time until you go around and this whole thing is done I'm going to go ahead and cut this out all the way around no sense in you watching me do that and I'll show you what it looks like there we go okay we're back at our bench sticky tape comes off pretty easily just take a a putty knife or a screwdriver and pop it off like that remember it just it just well it'll work a couple of times this one appears to be on here a bit better but there we go like that got some sanding to do on the felt sander but that's okay you might give that a whirl again five thirty seconds bit that's four millimeters find the distance between here and here with your trusty metric ruler double whatever that is cut an angle in it on the shank end like so 
and throw it in and work an eighth of an inch at a time. Let me know how this works out for you. All right, guys. What do you think of that? I mean, I guess it's a saver when it comes to doing sanding because all I had to do with this one in the end was just a light sanding job. The other one that I used the uh, bandsaw, a lot more sandy. So I didn't take the time to really look at it. So I'm not going to tell you one way or the other. I'm in my day job. I'm kind of a politician. So if you ever get an answer out of one, that's amazing in itself. But you want to um, try it out because I'm not going to lead you down a path. If I'm going to go to hell, it's certainly not going to be for lying over a drill bit that's had the end of it cut off angle, that's for sure. But you can get into this and try it pretty cheap if you have a drill press. There's a lot of people have drill presses. I wouldn't run out and buy a drill press just for this. If you have a drill press and you're using it for tuner holes and stuff like that, um, uh, yeah, but I mean, your investment's pretty cheap. You got couple two three dollar drill bits on some sticky tape and you need this headstock anyway by the way the sticky tape's good well it was good stuff anyway give it a whirl let me know what you think and um i'm gonna start when you start seeing guitars up there on the wall pretty soon the, yeah the day's coming you know it's been coming when you see guitars up there they'll be for sale and if you see one up there hanging behind me we'll get rid of some of this whatever all this is, I'm going to hate to lose because there's some good memories up there. But the thing you need to remember is Robert Johnson, king of the Delta Blues singers. That link is below. And um, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.